It's no secret that Dead Island 2 is extremely fun to play and I'm going to show you the best build in my opinion to run and play this game and just destroy everything and have a super fun time playing. That being said, over time players are going to be able to min-max their character and make them even more powerful in a bunch of different ways, but this is what I think is the most powerful way. This heavy attack, high attack power, heavy hitting, huge stamina and health regain build in Dead Island 2 is so fun to play. You constantly regenerate your stamina, your health, almost all on its own and have weapons that just run through every boss and let you take on hordes of enemies at a time and just do massive damage in a super fun, gory bloodbath. That being said, this is the best build in Dead Island 2. So let's go over our weapons. So the primary weapon I'm going to be using is a Mizrath. This is the legendary hammer you get for completing the main storyline. Now, if you don't have this hammer, just use a regular composite sledgehammer, which is a perfectly fine primary for this build because it does so much damage at a time. So you can see I have a superior hammer here. The upgrades I have on it are the rare melee punctuator mod, which gives us bleed damage and gives us a damage boost and also applies the bleed effect to enemies. A lot of enemies in this game are vulnerable to bleed and once combined with the hammer, it just does a lot of damage. And the perks you're gonna wanna use are balance, which means heavy attacks charge faster and use less stamina. So you can do a lot more heavy attacks attacks with a little little cost. Damaging which increases overall damage and empowering which makes it so critical hits and heavy attacks also again do increase damage. This allows us to take the most advantage of heavy attacks and this setup works for every single build. Obviously it works better with a build such as Danny who has higher stamina but regardless it does a ton of damage anyways. The second best weapon is the claws. The claws are literally insane no matter what build you're using the claws just destroy everybody. So here I'm using the superior melee electrocutor mod. This does shock damage and gives a major damage boost and also applies the electrified effect to enemies, which essentially just by itself stun locks enemies into oblivion. When you hit an enemy with this and they get electrocuted, they can't move unless it's like a higher tier level enemy. Perks here are slaughter, which increases limb damage and durability. So it allows us to maim zombies a lot easier and take off their limbs. Static charge, which boosts electrified charge to zombies hit. And repeated hits release a shock explosion that electrifies nearby zombies as well. So not only are we electrifying zombies here and doing a lot of shock damage, we're boosting that charge and damage here with static charge. And once we hit an enemy two or three times, it electrifies all the enemies around that enemy, giving us damage all over to everybody that's near us, which is great and hazardous and then hazardous which means hitting a zombie that has a status effect triggers a forceful explosion so in two or three hits we essentially electrify all the zombies around us and then each time we hit one they all blow up so you can literally just run through groups of zombies with this set of claws it's so so good highly recommend our other weapon is going to be the katana so again i use the melee electrocutor mod here to do electric damage shockwave so knocking down a zombie triggers a forceful explosion on impact again slaughter for limb damage and durability and lightweight which is also really good for the sword which increases our attack speed meaning we can attack very very quick we can do a lot of damage and maim zombies and take off their limbs very quickly and once they get knocked down they again blow up meaning we damage all the enemies around us every single time you can see i have the pike you can feel free to swap that weapon out for whatever weapon you choose and the other three weapons here are your guns so one in particular is very important and if you're not using it you definitely should be using it which is the sharpshooter weapon or the hunting rifle here you can see i have that set up so this weapon can specifically hit bosses like super super hard so you should always be using it to take them out like super easy here you can see i have it set up with the superior range punctuator mod which converts your weapons to inflict bleed damage again because most enemies in this game are vulnerable to bleed damage at a pretty high rate speed loader increasing reload speed and damaging increasing our overall damage you don't really need a third perk here but feel free to put one on if you want obviously here using the sporting rifle you can use the one that's automatic if you'd like it doesn't really matter uncommon range electrocutor mod i have on this weapon so you can see i'm covering all my bases i have a weapon with fire and i have a weapon with electric so that way i can take advantage of both of those effects on environmental objects again damaging and then i have agile which killing a zombie gives a minor agility boost and this can stack making us much more agile in combat and finally the shotgun which is actually really good and pretty overrated for the most part it's great to clear out a lot of lower level zombies that are going to come running at you at some point so once you have a big group of zombies this can take them out pretty quick i'm using the uncommon ranged cremator mod which again gives us the fire damage in case i need that later mind blowing which killing a zombie with a blow to the head triggers a forceful explosion and damaging for again the extra damage again the primary set for this build is the legendary hammer or the regular composite hammer if you have an 
unlocked the legendary yet the claws which just demolish everybody the katana and these three guns and the other weapons are up to you to decide what you want to do now for our cards we have a specific setup here so the way this build is primarily set up this build is very stamina based and heavy attack based so a lot of these cards allow us to deal a lot of different damage with heavy attacks and essentially regain our stamina very very quickly so we almost never run out of stamina which means we can attack and do heavy attacks as much as we want as well as regain a solid amount of health. So this ability here is going to be dodge so it allows us to obviously dodge and evade incoming attacks and if you well time those dodges you regain stamina and actually stun the zombies which means you can counter attack them and this just adds to our abilities so we can heavy attack an enemy and dodge out of the way and regain a lot of our stamina. Drop kick, drop kick allows us to forcefully jump kick an enemy and send them flying. Drop kick allows us to forcefully jump kick an enemy. We then have ground pound, which essentially pounds the ground and drains the stability of all nearby zombies. And once you drain the stability of nearby zombies, they're gonna fall down and you can do the head stomp smash on their head or just smack them while they're on the ground and do a bunch of damage that way. Next we have Blood Rush which allows us to slay zombies and perform counter attacks to build fury. So again this builds on top of our dodging abilities earlier. So we can heavy attack an enemy, do a ton of damage, dodge the next enemy, regain all our stamina, and then once we dodge that enemy counter them to build up our fury meter very quickly to get fury attacks super quick. And then Scream which once you press this button in fury mode it emits a piercing scream and it weakens all the enemies around you. This is great for bosses so you can weaken bosses essentially and then just smack them to death when you're in your fury mode for the survivor for the survivor cards we're using safety first which ups your defensive game it means a well-timed block or dodge regains health so again this builds on our dodging from earlier so now when you do a well-timed dodge you're going to get not only stamina but you're going to regain health as well and you're going to build your fury meter meaning dodging really, really rewards you here. Next, we're gonna use the invigorating card, which means when you counterattack zombies, you regain extra health and even more than usual. So again, building once again, you dodge, you regain all this stuff, and then you counterattack them and you gain fury for your fury meter and you regain extra health. And so essentially you're just a self healer at this point just by dodging and smacking people. Next, we're gonna use serial killer, which is a Danny and Jacob only card. What happens is when you slay a zombie, you get a minor boost of damage and safe space, which means using a med kit it triggers a forceful explosion and it drains the stabilities of nearby zombies allowing you to knock them down much easier to the ground and make them vulnerable to big damage hit attacks this card specifically is swappable but that's just what i like to use so this is again another one you can swap out i just like it i've just been testing it it allows your overhead smash attacks to get a major boost to damage and force so if you do an overhead smash attack it's going to also build your fury but just demolish enemies when you hit them dead eye which when you hit a zombie with a curveball item because curveball items are very very useful in this game once you hit a zombie with a curveball item you trigger a recharge boost that can sack multiple times if you hit multiple enemies with a throwable you're going to recharge that throwable very very quickly the next card is corpse bomb meaning in fury mode zombies slain erupt into powerful explosions so each one you kill which is like one or two hits when you're in fury mode honestly is going to explode and do damage all around them the limb reaper it means when you maim a zombie you get to regain health using this with some of the weapons in this build such as the sword or claws you're going to constantly be maiming enemies meaning you're going to regain health on dodges and a lot of it and regain health on maiming zombies which means you're going to be regaining a lot of health and basically self-healing corpse blossom meaning when you slay a zombie with fire shock or caustic damage it will detonate into a powerful explosion of that same damage type so this is really good for primarily our electric weapons because we're going to be causing a ton of enemies to explode and this just adds to that almost guaranteeing us an explosion of an enemy every single time we defeat one and anger mismanagement as our final newman skill slot which takes the risk to stay in fury mode for longer allowing you to stay in fury mode and fight more enemies and do a lot more damage to bosses since you do such a high amount when your fury meter runs out you give up your health slowly until your health reaches a very low level but it allows you to stay in fury mode and then once you get out of fury mode you can just heal instantly but it lets you deal that high high damage for much longer of a time all of these things put together create a best of both worlds build like i mentioned earlier this build works for every single character in the game but if you want to start out i would highly recommend using danny as a character and using this as your main playthrough character and just following along with this guide because it's super fun to play and lets you get a ton of utility guys make sure you subscribe on the left check out this dead island 2 video on the right side of your screen and like the video if you haven't already that being said let me know your thoughts on this build in the comments i appreciate you guys Thanks.